Welcome to the Physics Tutor. In this DVD course, we're going to discuss the fundamental concepts of physics, and we're going to do it without a bunch of boring lectures and a bunch of derivations that will take, you know, five boards or, or whatever to do. But we're going to do it through working um, example problems, okay? I've taught a lot of people how to, how to do algebra, calculus, trig, and also physics. And uh, in my experience, it's actually the toughest subject to actually teach is really physics. And, and you might say, why is that? Um, the reason that I've found that people have a tough time with physics is because most people have a tough time with word problems. And that is exactly what this course is. The entire course of physics is basically just a bunch of math problems that just happen to be word problems. Um, you put, pick up a book of algebra or trigonometry or something and you'll, you'll get a problem and it will say solve this equation. And then if you just know how to bang through the different steps then you can kind of mechanically solve the equation and, and get the answer as long as you know the rules. Physics is a little bit different because physics we're going we're gonna to give you some rules but um, it's not going to be clear how to get to the answer. It's not going to be clear what to do first, what to, what to do second, what to do third. It's not going to be clear how to start the problem, okay? And so what I'm going to teach you in this course, I'm going to teach you in each section, I'm going to give you a kind of a basic lecture, a, a very um, um, cut to the chase, don't waste any time overview of the subject that we're talking about. And then I'm going to explain the actual mechanics of how to do the problems by doing problems. And uh, one thing I want to say is that uh, when you start a physics problem or when I write a problem up here on the board and you don't know immediately how to solve it because most of the time you won't don't freak out okay everybody goes through that you have to learn how to do this stuff by working the problems okay and uh, if you stick with me and uh, start at the beginning and work your way forward I promise you that by the end of this DVD course you will have a good understanding of physics and you'll have a good understanding of how to work problems in physics so without wasting any more time, let's just get right to it. The first thing that we're going to talk about in this class is the first thing in, in almost every single physics book ever printed, um, and that's one-dimensional motion. Okay, that's generally going to be the first topic um, that you have in physics. Now, a lot of times, the, the very first topic will be a basic chapter that will talk about, you know, how do you convert units, what are, are, are the units in physics, you know, what's the unit of force, what's the unit of distance, what's the unit of time, stuff like that. I chose to kind of skip that, not because it's not important, but I'm going to teach you that as we go and we work the problems. So if you don't know how to convert units, don't freak out. We're going to do that as we go along here. So what is one-dimensional motion anyway? Uh, we don't live in a one-dimensional world, okay? We live in a three-dimensional world. Um, as far as the three spatial dimensions. So um, in real life, like if, if this pin here is um, a basketball, okay, let's say, and I, I move it around, up and down, I can move it left and right, okay, that's one dimension, that's, that's the, uh, well, let's call it the X dimension, okay. I can also move it to you and from you, okay, and that's another dimension of space, and we could call that the Y dimension, let's say. Well, we can also have freedom of movement in this up and down direction here, and we can call that the z dimension, okay? It just labels. It doesn't really matter. X, Y, and Z, okay? That's what we call three-dimensional motion. That's the real world, okay? When you go to the grocery store, or actually a better example is when you fly in an airplane, you might turn left, you might turn right, but you might also go up and down. So that's three-dimensional motion. When you start to learn physics, three-dimensional motion is too complicated, so you need to start out with one-dimensional motion. What does that mean? That means, imagine that there were a string across the screen here, just a regular piece of string, and there were some beads on, on that string, you know, that, that kind of had a hole in them and they could slide back and forth, okay? One-dimensional motion just means motion constrained to move in only one dimension because we're going to simplify the problems and we're going to look at the simplified version of the world, okay? So instead of talking about X and Y and Z, because that's pretty complicated, okay, and we're going to get there, Let's don't do that at first. Let's start just by talking about one of those motion, one of those dimensions. And um, it doesn't matter which one. We usually just talk about the X dimension, okay? So this entire section is going to talk about how do things move when you um, describe the motion in one dimension, okay? So we're going to talk about the X dimension a lot. And just remember, that's just a label. It just means motion constrained in one direction only, backwards or forwards, no up, no down, 
know to and from just along this one line.